the introduction for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk about some recent hot topic uh, in machine learning. And you probably all have seen the nice images that you see on the web generated by AI. So the goal of today is not to show you how it works in details, but to give you uh, the probabilistic version, what it means in terms of probability, and how it may interact with what you're doing on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So the goal of today will be to sample from some distribution, uh, P of X, and in the traditional way, P of X is given through its log density, so negative log density, the energy uh, F of X, and this is common to many areas of uh, applied mathematics and computer science. So in this talk, I will mostly focus on the continuous uh, domains, but if you have a Markov tail on the graph, this is one example uh, 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 of this. Uh, and the key novelty here will be that we're going to look at f, which may not be given as a function, but we're going to observe samples uh, from the distribution. And the goal will be to, to give new, uh, new, uh, new samples. And what will make the problem difficult is that x will live in a high dimensional space, images, okay, so millions uh, of pixels. And, uh, uh, yeah. right, so the, in terms of applications, you probably all have seen image generation, okay, so generate a new face. This is like unconditional image generation, or uh, give me some prompt, y, and generate some image, x given y. And I will show one example, or two examples. So if you want to lose time, not during this talk, but afterwards, uh, uh, go on stablediffusionweb.com uh, uh, and give a prompt. And here it's a panda riding a bicycle in Paris, and this is what you obtain. So a uh, high, a large image, so at this point, probably a million of pixels, and very detailed. And so since I was giving a similar talk at Oberwolfar, I asked a mathematician in the Black Forest, and this is what you obtain. And I'm showing this just because I think it's pretty, pretty impressive in terms of results, and also to highlight the dimensionality. Okay, so we are not generating digits, we're generating full, uh, uh, full images. But clearly, uh, image generation is not uh, the only uh, uh, reason why we do all that. And a very nice paper by a colleague of mine, and uh, Frey, who is the first author, doing protein discovery. So we generate proteins with a given, with a given target. So this, this can be used not only to show and uh, to, to produce pretty, pretty images, but also to do things which are like, uh, probably uh, uh, more useful. Right, so what are the main difficulties is that we're going to sample from things which are multimodal, okay? So the, in, an image is not a Gaussian in dimension one million, okay? There is like lots of, of, mo of uh, different modes and everything, every time we talk about like sampling uh, complex multimodal distributions, you should think about the curse of dimensionality. So everything, if you do things a bit naively, will be exponential in D and when D is one million, it won't, it won't work. All right, so what, uh, what are we going to uh, leverage a lot uh, today is a specific kind of iterative algorithms for sampling, okay? So if you do like Markov chains, you can use Gibbs sampling, the Metropolis Hastings. Since I'm going to live in a continuous world, the, correspond the corresponding algorithm is often called Langevin, which essentially, given your energy F, you're going to do gradient descent on F. So if you do that, gradient descent, you're going to end up in a local uh, minimum of F. But if you add some noise, some Gaussian noise with the correct variance, you're not going to converge to F, but to a sample of the Gibbs distribution uh, defined by F. Okay, so this is uh, the Gibbs distribution defined by F. And if you do a gradient descent, so current, given your iterates, you go towards the negative gradient and add, add some noise with the correct variance. If the step size of the goes to zero, the noise goes to zero, you end up sampling from a diffusion. Okay, so I want talk so much about diffusion uh, uh, today, because the way I see diffusion is simply as a limit of this uh, noisy gradient descent uh, distribution. So this is, uh, compared to optimization, the Langevin algorithm is globally convergent, in the sense that there's no need to have F to be convex, uh, to converge to the, uh, to the distribution, a bit like Gibbs sampling. It always works. It may, it, it may take a lot, a lot of time to mix, but uh, more or less, it always works. Same thing for Langevin, it always works, but it's going to be super slow unless you know something about the distribution. Essentially, if F is convex, so your distribution is log concave, you have a ton of results showing that it's going to behave well, 
Okay, so uh, nice work uh, uh, by Dallalian, Durmus, and Moulin, and a nice book by, by Chui. All right, so the, the way it works, okay, so this is my Gaussian distribution. So I'm going to show a lot in plots in 2D, okay? I'm going to show contour plots of uh, densities. So this is a density of a Gaussian. And here I'm showing in black the, the uh, path of the Langevin algorithm. So it's mixing and exploring uh, the mode of the distribution. Okay, everything is nice and easy. But as soon as I make, thi uh, I make things multimodal, okay, so a mixture of two Gaussians, okay, so complex combination of two Gaussians with different means, then I mix around one mode, and sometimes I jump to the other mode and I mix there. But you should imagine that in real life, at least for images, you're more in that setup where the uh, Gaussians are very far apart. So you're going to explore one mode, okay, and only go there with very low probability. Okay, so if you wait infinitely long, then you will jump from one to the other, but this will take, uh, this, this will take forever, and you will never see it in finite time. So the goal is, how do I handle this? Okay, so essentially the goal is to go beyond log concave distributions. If it was log concave, I would just do Langevin and uh, noisy gradient descent, and this would work perfectly. All right, so this is the goal uh, for today. All right, so there will be, oh, excuse me, so three ideas uh, uh, in this talk. So all of them are not mine, okay? So if, you comp if you're not happy with them, you complain to the authors. Uh, but are very good ideas, okay? And I will show at the end one of our ideas. So the idea would be, we're not going to try to sample using Langevin, we're going to use a very different process. We're going to add some noise, okay, and then generate noisy data, and hopefully go from the noisy data to the clean data. Okay, so the idea is that in the noisy data, things should be easier to, uh, easier to sample, okay? So you make, you project, but you go into a space where things are be, going to be easier to sample, and then you go back. It's the first idea by, uh, Said Saremi and Apo Ivarinen, okay, and I will, of course, like, spend, like, uh, half an hour on that, on the, on the entire uh, three ideas. But then we'll see that to denote the data, you need to know something about the, the distribution, okay? And what you need is going to be the, uh, uh, it's called the score function, the gradient of the log density. And uh, one key aspect is that if you have some data, you can learn that score, okay? And which is very troubling for people coming from either TCS or probability, that if I give you the energy, f of x, the score is not easy to compute, okay? So it's not going to solve your uh, uh, sampling hard distributions, okay? It works because you can learn the score uh, from data. And this is going to be the, very quickly, the machine learning part of the talk. So you need samples, okay? So this is very, uh, quite a special uh, 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 case. And then, this is going to work, but we'll see that there will be a trade-off between like, easiness of sampling and uh, uh, fuzziness of the samples. And to, do the, to, to be able to generate like, digits, that's enough, but to generate like, big images, you need to do a bit, a bit more. And this is the last part I will spend less time uh, around, which is using like, progressive denoising, and this is where you can see diffusion uh, appearing. And if time permits, probably it won't, I'm going to talk about one view which I've worked on by colleagues uh, uh, in, in the US. All right, so let's go through these three ideas uh, one by one, okay? All right, so the first idea is to, I'm going to add some noise, okay? I'm going to replace my X, so X, this is my big image, but for the purpose of this talk, X will always be a mixture of two Gaussians, okay, which are uh, reasonably far apart, so that if you do Langevin, you won't explore the two modes. So this is, if you do Langevin, so you mean to, uh, on, on X directly, because I'm going to define Y, which is X plus Gaussian noise. So here, throughout this talk, I'm going to consider the Euclidean geometry by adding some Gaussian noise. Okay, so normal zero identity, so always isotropic, and with variance uh, sigma squared. So when sigma equal to zero, Y is equal to X, okay, so I've not done anything, but you can see that if I add, uh, if I increase the variance uh, sigma squared here, then I, I'm going to, add some noise, I'm going to make the bumps larger and larger. And uh, if, it's a, if it's a bit larger, I'm still going to mix only in one mode, but then there is a threshold after which I'm going to start to explore the two modes. And if I take sigma la, la, long enough, large enough, I end up being log concave. Okay, so the idea is that clearly, if you're log concave, it's easy to sample. Okay, you explore a lot. If you're slightly below log concave, you still explore. Okay, so the, the key here is that 
you can show that if sigma is large enough, you're going to be easy to sample, okay? And that is a probably easier. So we have results in our uh, paper showing that if sigma is large enough, you're going to make, you can, you can make any distribution log concave by adding sigma large enough, okay? All right, so this is, uh, this is uh, the first, uh, first idea is I'm going to uh, uh, sample something which is noisy. The key here is that how do I go back? Okay, because after, once I have a sample, let's say from uh, this one, okay, I'm very far from the sample from that one. So I need a way to go back. Okay, so you add noise to sample, then you have to denoise the sample, and denoising means I have a sample of the noisy data, I, I need to go to the clean data. All right, so, the, uh, so as I've shown, sampling is easier, how do I go back? And to go back, we're going to leverage a classical idea in statistics, which is called empirical Bayes, and this dates back from Robbins, in, from, the, from the 50s, and this is the same Robbins as Robbins Monroe, okay, the HGD paper, stochastic gradient descent paper, is by Robbins Monroe for the same, almost the same year, so Robbins has, is a man of many talent, and this was also like uh, done by Miyazawa uh, in the Gaussian case, and what is the goal here? The goal is to do denoising. Okay, so X is my clean data, Y is my noisy data, and if I want to get the best denoiser, and the best being in the mean square, uh, the mean square sense, okay, the best denoiser is known to be the conditional expectation of Y given X. Okay, so you see the optimal denoiser uh, of, uh, to obtain X given Y, and it turns out that there is a formula for it. Okay, it's called the empirical based formula. And if you know the density of uh, the noisy data of X plus sigma uh, times the Gaussian, then you can uh, obtain in closed form uh, 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 the denoiser, it's Y. So Y is not, is a reasonable denoiser, okay? Y is X plus noise, I can first output Y, okay? Y is not a terrible uh, estimate for X, but if you want to get the optimal estimate, then you have to need, you need to add some correction factor that depend on sigma square, okay? The bigger the sigma, the larger the deviation. And it's a gradient of the log density of y. So the proof is by integration by part. So I'm just going to flash it so that if you look at the slides later on, you can see where it comes from. It's really right into the definition, integration by parts, because the Gaussian has a nice derivative. And that's it, okay? There's nothing magic uh, uh, here. So I'm not going to uh, look at it anymore. All right. So it's integration by parts. So now this is the uh, uh, optimal denoiser. So a very common uh, misconception is, is optimal, hence it is good, okay? So it may have a huge variance, okay? And uh, so this is really something that you should be uh, very, uh, very clear uh, about, is that it can be super bad if sigma is too large. So if I add too much noise over there, so X plus noise is very bad, it's very far from X. Denoising will help, but will not, uh, will not make it perfect. In fact, what you can show is that between the law of X and the law of this posterior expectation of X given Y, you can bound it by sigma square times uh, the distance. So if sigma square is large, this bound is meaningless, and if sigma is small, you're going to get a good sample. Right. So let's look at my example. Okay, so let's spend some time here. So here I have three colors in my samples. I have samples from the true distribution X in black. I have samples from the noisy distribution uh, Y in red. And I get, I get the denoiser, uh, denoising the uh, noisy sample. Okay, it's, it's, it's random because Y is random. So E of X given Y is random because of the randomness of Y. So if I add almost no noise, everything's the same. Okay, y is the same as x, and denoising y is the same as x. So this one shows that for small sigma, nothing happens. If sigma is large, you see the difference between the black dots, which are the x samples, and the uh, red dots, which are the uh, y samples. So the black dots are around like by uh, here and there, okay? The red dots are obtained by, increase, by adding some noise, so they are more spread than the black dots, very nice. And if you look at the E of X given Y, okay, then they are uh, reasonable in the sense that they're going to uh, uh, concentrate a bit the red samples back closer to the, to the white, to the black samples, but you do create some, a lot of artifacts. So noise, denoising is 
uh, improving, but it's not perfect, okay? And the key here is to notice that for that simple example with uh, uh, two Gaussians, of course, this is uh, perfect, but keep in mind that to sample, ah, to sample from sigma, you need to do Langevin won't work, okay? For sigma equals to two, where uh, sampling is easy, then the samples, the denoise samples are not very good. The key here is that there is like some intermediate steps where sampling is not too difficult, and the difference between the uh, light blue, uh, light blue uh, uh, dots and the black dots are not too far. Okay, this is really important to highlight the fact that there's a good, there's a trade-off in sigma. If sigma is too small, you have a perfect denoiser, but it's hard to sample. And if sigma is too large, then you get very easy sampling because you're lock concave, but your noises, your denoise samples are simply like too fuzzy. Okay, and fuzzy means that you're going to, in fact, not have the variability that you have there, but you're going to focus only on the on the on the on the, on the means. All right, so this is the uh, 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 sampling denoising uh, 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 scheme. I add some noise, so I'm going to sample the uh, red dots, which are easy to sample because I can do Langevin, and then I get the turquoise uh, uh, denoise, denoise sample. All right. So this is uh, easy for uh, Gaussians. Why it is easy? Because I, need, I know the density of, uh, of Y. Okay, so this is where the catch is, is that to be able to do that, I need to know the density of Y, okay? So the first, and I need, I need to copy the gradient. So the first nice uh, uh, thing is that you don't need to know the normalizing constant. Okay, so if you work with like Gibbs distributions, you, are well, you should be aware that the, the, knowing the normalizing constant is a big thing, you never know it, and this is a way to avoid knowing it, so it's already a good thing, but I need to know uh, uh, that density. And in practice, I don't know how to compute it. Okay, if you give me an energy f of x, where p of x is the Gibbs distribution associated with uh, that energy, computing uh, q of sigma or the gradient of the log is something which you can't do. Okay, so in a sense, in fact, you can even show that if you know the scores at all, so the score is called the this is a, that that quantity is called the score function. So if you know the scores at various scales, you can even show you can sample in polynomial time. Okay, so in a sense that. If, if whenever you have some lower bound in sampling time, this uh, uh, can only work if you know the scores. Okay, so you need you need to know the scores. So this is a key. This is the second idea in this like diffusion model uh, uh, business is how do I get the scores? Okay, because if I know the energy, the scores are, are hard to uh, uh, hard to obtain. How do you get the scores? And this is uh, so just a summary of what we have seen uh, earlier. So we have, uh, we have, so you see the optimal denoiser obtained with the gradient of the log of Q of sigma, and it's called the score function. So the, the second ID is an ID uh, taken by, from uh, Apo Ivarinen and Pascal Vincent uh, from uh, more than 10 years ago, and the idea is to, to rely on samples, okay? So uh, if you know, you, you assume you know some images in, your, in our case, okay, X1 to Xn, sample from P of X, and from those samples, you can create noisy samples. Just you add noise, okay? Uh, you, you add noise with uh, Gaussian distribution and variance sigma square. And then uh, you, in, you want to learn this, uh, uh, this gradient of low density. So it, 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 since it is a gradient, you have to parameter the function that goes from images to images, okay? It's a more complex function than, than usual. Typically, in machine learning, we learn the real valued function. Here, you have to learn like, uh, uh, a function with like uh, D values. And then since you want the, we know the optimal denoiser is Y plus sigma square times the score, we can simply like try to reproduce XI, which we know as YI plus sigma square times our like uh, estimation of the score. Okay, so we have a model for the score. And by minimizing this, then uh, the hope is that to uh, learn the score, but the hope. It's a classical machine learning setup. If I had infinite, infinite amounts of data n, and if the model was very flexible, I would recover the score exactly. Okay, this is like the 
classical like population learning, if I have infinite amount of data and uh, in, like a very flexible model, but in practice, okay, I have to, I have to define a model and typically for the image experiments, it's a neural network with like super deep and various like gadgets. So this is where you put like all the knowledge of computer vision uh, for this, and I'm, I'm going to explain, to explain it. But essentially a deep learning model, you form the square loss, okay? The square loss is here important because we want to recover the optimal denoiser for the square loss. And you just launch gradient descent and uh, using the technology uh, of uh, computer vision and machine learning, then you end up with a reasonable uh, uh, square function. Okay, so most of the magic of uh, those denoisers are in the score function, okay? So the way you can learn it is, uh, is uh, very important, and this is like hard to understand, uh, hard to, uh, to, prove any, to prove anything about it, but this is what current practice is doing. All right, so let's give some examples now. So let's summarize what we need to do. So if the goal is to generate a bunch, let's say digits, I'm going to generate digits, I give you a bunch of digits, and I want to generate new ones, okay? So first, you learn, a sc you learn uh, the score at a single scale, so you're going to you, you get your data, add some noise, and optimize the cost function I described earlier on. You get the score, and then you can, you can uh, sample Y, okay, using Langevin, because I know the, the log density of Q, so I sample the Y, so the hope is that those Ys are easy to sample, and then they call it the walk phase, you walk in the space of noisy samples, and you jump back to the space of clean samples by denoising using the score function. So what is nice here is both sampling and denoising are going to use the score that you learn. Okay, it's really made for the score. All right, so what is important to, to keep in mind is the trade-off in sigma. Same thing as for the Gaussians, mixture of two Gaussians. If sigma is too large, okay, then my denoiser is going to be optimal but crappy, okay, very fuzzy. And if sigma is too small, then I'm going to have a very clean sample if I denoise, but the sample will be, will, be, will be very difficult because I go back to the clean, I go back to the multimodal aspect. So let's look at in digits. Okay, so this is like uh, taken, this is like real data. It's not anymore Gaussians. So those are the noisy digits. Okay, so this is a digit, which is like uh, maybe a, a square, of, uh, I think there are 16 digits. So just to highlight the fact that the amount of noise we add is huge. So here digits are black and white be with values zero or one, okay, be between zero and one. So if you add a Gaussian of variance one, you don't see the digit anymore, okay? So you see there is the digits, okay? So here we add a lot of noise, okay? So in terms of uh, uh, what you see, so in terms of uh, sampling, it's nice because it's almost like white noise, okay? Not quite, but almost like white noise. So you're going to, to sample over there, like, almost white noise because we added a lot of noise. And then are you going to, at every sample, you're going to jump back into the clean space. And you see what you observe here. So I could show the, uh, the uh, Markov chain in the noisy sample, but you will see white noise over white noise. So it's not very, uh, not very, there's nothing to see. But if you look at the uh, uh, clean samples, okay, after you denoise, you see that you jump, okay, from six, five, three, two, two, eight, seven. So two things here, and this is like one step of sampling. Okay, so Markov chain, which is mixing very rapidly. Why? Because you jump from one class to the other very rapidly. Okay, it's not like you have to wait forever to jump from the mode of ones to the mode of twos. You jump very quickly, okay, in, in, in a few samples. So first, it's very fast sampling. This was the goal. And the, the denoiser is reasonable. Okay, the denoise samples are Sometimes they, do, they look very good. Sometimes they are a bit fuzzy. Okay, so it's not it's not it's not perfect, but it's a it's a case where the data are simple enough so that there's a good trade-off between fast sampling and good denoising. So here, if I start to put a smaller noise variance, so what what, we should, what what should we expect if you have a smaller noise variance? We should expect it's harder to sample. You should mix uh, like uh, a bit more slowly, but you should get nicer samples. And you see what you, but this is what they obtain. So the sample looks sharper than what you see here. Okay, fine. But it does sample like uh, more slowly. Okay, you get stuck with a five for, for quite a while. You jump to eight and go back to five. So this is a nice way to see the trade-offs in uh, this sampling by denoising. 
Again, you add some noise to make things easy to sample, and you add a lot of noise, as you can see here. And then once you have sampled in that space, which is easy, you go back to the clean space, okay? And hopefully, if sigma is not too large, you get very sharp samples. Okay, so this is the first version of denoising by sampling is that single noise, yep, single noise uh, uh, variance. Yep. Oh, you learn it here? So here the first step is give me the pile of data that you have, learn f of theta, which is supposed to learn the gradient of the low density. Okay? So you only know the, your, your density through samples. You learn f of theta, which is a proxy for the gradient of the low density by minimizing this. Okay? No, in fact, there's no need. In fact, this is the, the key here is that learning f of x will be harder because f of x is uh, sharper. Q is much uh, smoother, so it's easier to learn. Yeah, we could, uh, but uh, typically this is where uh, this is a classical learning uh, pipeline. Trial and error is typically easier than uh, learning it directly. Okay, you try several values, and typically you put a bit of the physics in quotes. So here, since the digits here are between zero and one, you know the scale should not be like uh, far away from one. Okay. It, typically, uh, I don't know any learning method that don't, doesn't have at least one hyperparameter. Here it has uh, one hyperparameter, which is sigma. And this one, typically, you try and take the one that works best. But the, the good point is define working best. So this will be one of the last slides of my talk, is that it's very hard to have a rigorous evaluation of what works best. So here, I say what works best is what looks better. Okay, it's not very uh, rigorous, okay? And th this is an open problem of defining what works best. Uh, uh, yeah. So you could define a distance between what you generate and you, uh, your distribution, but computing the like, distances between the high-dimensional objects is difficult, okay? So there is a circular, there is like a curse of dimensionality all over the place to sample and also to measure the quality of your samples. So this is still open, okay, how to measure uh, good distances. That's a very good point. We're going to learn that for different sigma in a moment, typically there is some sharing of parameters. So in the way you parameterize your f of theta, so if, if, if you need to learn at, at different sigmas, the first layer of the neural net are the same, and the last layers are a bit different. So this is like all the, all the dirty aspects of machine learning that maybe don't want to hear about, but those are, those are, those are needed. Okay, so here, in that one line, there's a lot of work, okay, to make things work. And without that lot of work, all the math you can put on top of it are use, is, is, uh, is useless. Because this is really what, what makes it work, okay? Then you have ways to... Uh, Leverage a good score in a good way, but without a good score, nothing would work anyway. So whenever you have a new problem, like for proteins, which my colleague Said Sarami worked on, you had to learn the score for proteins. So you need to know about the biology, you need to know about what makes a good, what, what is the point of proteins, okay? Like for images, you, know, you need to know how to represent images, and there's like tons of ways of doing it, but this is a, a topic of itself. All right, so, Let's go beyond digits. So this is like, uh, I think, a CIFAR 10 uh, example. So like 32 by 32 images, which are uh, already more complex than digits. OK, it's like uh, three colors. And you can see that the images are reasonably good. And you mix uh, quite quickly. OK, so this is like more recent work that I've done with uh, my colleagues, showing that this single uh, sigma uh, is good enough. OK, so they have a trade-off between easiness of sampling and quality of samples. For digits, it's okay. For this, it's okay. But if you move to big images, okay, like the one that we have uh, for stable diffusions, doesn't work, okay? You get like not a nice looking uh, image, okay? So for the last 10 minutes, I want to highlight what to do. And this is a third idea, okay? 
So first ID, you're going to you're going to add noise. Okay, you're going to add noise here. Okay, sample the noisy data and go back. It's the first two IDs. First ID. Second ID, you, you, you need to learn the score. This is where learning comes in. And the third ID will be how do I, uh, how can I uh, make sampling easier? And this is where diffusion model comes in. And this is a, a bit more recent and a, a tiny bit more technical. Ah, so the, the way, so this is like, uh, this was launched by Song and Herman and Song like uh, five years ago. And here I'm going to follow the very nice tutorial paper of Gabriel Perret from ONS uh, and also Valentin Bortoli. And the idea is you're going to not add a single noise, okay, like we did before. We went from X to X plus sigma. But we're going to add noise using like a, a, a diffusion. Okay, so the, diff the one that is shown is the orstein ulebeck uh, uh, process where it's a diffusion with a constant, by well, the linear drifter plus some, plus some, uh, plus some uh, uh, Brayton motion. And the key here is that as before, you start from your X and you add some noise, okay? So what you should remember from the Orstein and Lebeck process is that if you stop at any given amount of time, the, the distribution of XT is X0 rescale plus some Gaussian noise, okay? So we are only adding noise in a continuous way and rescaling. So in picture, my favorite uh, Gaussian mixture, at time zero, this is my Gaussian mixture, and I'm going to add noise and rescale. Okay, so you add noise and, and, and I rescale. And if I want to add more and more noise, I would like blow up. But since I'm rescaling, then I, I, I keep the same, the, same, uh, the same scale. And from T, I get like a nice, my nice uh, mixture of two Gaussians. And after I add more and more noise, I end up with a Gaussian. Okay, so this is what you should see. This Orstein de Lebeck process will continuously move from one uh, uh, by initial distribution, which may be as complex as, as complex as you want, to my Gaussians, okay? And what we're going to do is not denote directly from there to there, like we did before, okay? What we did before, we say, start from complex distribution, add some noise, let's get there, and go back directly by using like uh, the optimal denoiser. What we're going to do is move slowly and denoise step by step, okay, until we end up there. Okay, this is really what, what's happening. We're going to do progressive denoising, and this will, which will allow to make, and all the steps of this progressive denoiser will be easy, okay, stable, and hence the uh, overall stability. But the idea is the same. I'm going to add some noise to go to something very simple, and here Gaussian. I know how to sample a Gaussian, okay, it's easy. And then we're going to progressively denoise the samples, okay, uh, uh, as you go along. So the key here, maybe I should, I should, uh, important is, I'm denoising in terms of distributions, okay. So if I take a sample there, let's say this one, and I add some noise, when I denoise, I will never go back to the same sample. I will go back to something of the same distribution. Very important, okay. So it's we we move in the space of distributions, okay. But for every sample, we obtain something uh, different. All right, so the way to do it. So again, I'm going to follow this orstein lembeck process, okay? And uh, 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 which goes from when T is zero, you get X is zero. When T is infinite, I get a Gaussian with variance uh, identity, okay? So the way it's going to work, I'm going to define a backward flow, okay? Going from the bottom, uh, bottom right corner to the top left uh, in the previous slide. So when T is large, Okay, if you take T large, then this is forgotten. You obtain only Gaussian here. So you start from there, and you do some backward simulations. So the key, how do you do it? Okay, this is where uh, diff continuous diffusion comes in. So if you define the backward diffusion, okay, started at uh, X capital T, then you can show, it's like a nice exercise in Fokker Planck equations, okay, which I won't do. Uh, but it's really like two lines as well. Well, let's say, let's say three. Then it also follows the diffusion, okay, with a drift term, which is now not as simple as before, okay? You, uh, you need to know the score function, okay, because R is the density of XT. XT is X0 plus some motion noise, so essentially I need a score function at, at a given scale, plus some broadened motion, okay? So here, to be able to do, 
to do uh, backward simulations here. So this, this was known from, from, from before, okay? If you have a Markov chain going forward, you also have a Markov chain going backward. This is well known. The tough part is my Markov chain going forward is homogeneous, always has the same uh, dynamics, but going backwards, the dynamics has to be adapted to where I am. As you see, that's only what's happening here. To go backwards, I need to know the marginal distribution of where I am, okay? Hence, the uh, uh, backward diffusion has to have a term which is uh, dependent on the current density, okay? So in terms of Markov change, this is something which is not out of the ordinary, but this is down in continuous time. And now, in terms of algorithms, it's going to be uh, direct. I'm going to simply, like, I have an SDE. I can use the Euler uh, Maruyama discretization, which is simply like noisy gradient descent. So I define the step size uh, gamma, and then I move, uh, move backwards. So this is just like discretizing the diffusion. Okay, so this is essentially what's, uh, what's happening. And if I want to summarize, and I'll stop there, uh, if I want to uh, summarize, first, you learn the score functions at multiple scales, because now we're going to denoise continuously, so we need the score at various scales, okay? So this is a bit harder than before. And then you just implement this, okay? And that's it, okay? So this is the, uh, so the magic, really, is how you learn the scores to get nice images. And then you leverage this, like, probabilistic argument with forward diffusion, backward diffusion, to be able to uh, uh, denoise. All right. So what I want, what I want do to leave time uh, uh, for uh, uh, for questions is another view. Okay. So here, uh, why do we need another view? Mostly because uh, uh, for, I don't like I don't like diffusions. Okay. Mostly because I don't know them very well. Okay. And also because diffusions are attached to Gaussian noise. Okay. You can define various diffusions. It's always Gaussian. Okay. So Gaussian. For continuous data, it's okay. But if you want to apply to uh, discrete data, like hyper, binary hypercube, Gaussians will be, will be a problem. So how do you deal with the case where you want to avoid diffusions? Okay, essentially what we show, and I will simply, uh, simply uh, highlight that slide and I'll stop, I'll stop for, the, for that part, is we're going to not add, consider a single noisy version, we're going to consider multiple noisy versions. We're going to add noise with some Gaussian noise, but on the same X, in parallel, add several Gaussian noise, okay? And this is uh, something that can be shown to be very close to diffusion models if M gets large enough, but then you can apply it to any problem. You simply need to add a different type of noise. So if you have discrete data, you add some discrete noise. If you have a random bit, you add a random flip, okay? This is like uh, adapted. And uh, uh, so I won't give details here, but you can reproduce most of the results using that type of uh, add multiple measurements and, and go back. All right, so I'm skipping this. Pop, pop, pop. Nice images. Up. All right, and one thing I wanted to show is that if we do our uh, new measurement, it works well. And here, the all internet of that slide is what it means to work well. Okay, so here. In our experiments, we work with uh, mixtures of Gaussians. So we have access to the mixture of Gaussians, so we can generate data and we can easily compute distances. But how do you make sure that you generate a good image? It's hard, because you, you need to compute distances. Okay, this is a big open problem. And in fact, many of the uh, papers on, on genetic images have two parts. The part when you show your images, they look beautiful, and the part where you try to evaluate. There is some like, cost functions, but typically what minimizes the cost function is not what makes the images more beautiful, okay? There's really an open problem on how you, how you uh, uh, rigorously uh, compute distances. All right, so just uh, to, to summarize, so the three main ideas were of the sampling diffusion. The first one is to sample by denoising a noisy sample, okay? So I add some noise. I sample in the noisy, the noisy domain. It's easy because it's typically uh, less multimodal. Then I go back using, using optimal denoising. So this is where empirical base comes in. And the central element is a score function, the gradient of the low density after adding noise and not before. And this can be learned. And then you uh, should, for big problems, 
uh, where a single sigma is not, is not good enough, you can go, you can use like diffusions. So key open problems, how do you put math into it? Okay, so this is like, uh, still like uh, not uh, clearly done. So there are various uh, problems that could occur. How do you learn the denoiser? Okay, typically not perfectly. Okay, so typically you're going to learn a wrong denoiser and how does it propagate into your sampling? Even if you know the denoiser, how much time it takes to sample? Okay, this is something that people are still looking at. And one reason that should be uh, nice uh, uh, for this audience is that if you have the scores at all scales, people have shown that you can sample everything, anything in polynomial time. So give me the scores, is enough to sample. Okay, so if I give you the energy, you can't get the score easily, otherwise there's a, a problem in terms of complexity theory. Then other key open problem, how you go beyond Gaussians? Okay, so this is uh, something I'm actively working on and we're almost about to release uh, something where we can show you can do the same thing on the binary hypercube, but you have to adapt what Langevin means, what denoising means, and this is, can be done. Clearly here, uh, conditional sampling is the key here. Okay, sampling a new image, not really useful. What you really care about is, I have some target, okay, for the image, I have a prompt, and then I want to generate from the prompt. If I have a protein, I want a protein that will uh, bind to a particular other molecule. Okay, you want to do conditional sampling, and this is still hard to do. And finally, how you uh, evaluate, evaluation is, is a key problem. Okay, and this is like something which has plagued like unsupervised learning for uh, since the beginning is we look at the beauty and not at anything like more rigorous. So this is also uh, a topic of uh, high importance. Thank you for your attention.